Hello, friends. Jimmy here, Last Day's Awakening. I'm glad you have joined in on this basically not normally scheduled content creation, broadcast, video, whatever you want to call it. Today is July 26th, a day of infamy for us as we have been watching for the beginning of the ninth of Av. It's a day of infamy here in northern Missouri because it's hotter than the blazes and it's like a sauna outside. So it could be a good weight loss day. And my hope is the coupling of the rapture of the church in which I will shed this flesh and the weight loss that comes from a sauna and heat will uh, join together and I will be changed completely. That's my hope. Okay, we've been looking at the beginning of Av 9 and the period of time between the ninth of Av and the full moon, which would be the 15th of Av, as being a very special high watch time. I have been focusing in on uh, bringing content that I think um, confirms some of the things that have been revealed to various watchmen over the last couple of years, and uh, especially um, guys like Brother Tyler at Generation 2434, Dr. Barry Awe, um, several others. Uh, Ken Johnson brought it out on his studies of the Dead Sea Scroll about a year and a half ago, I believe it was. And so the, the awakening has been happening, and it's like the Lord is proving Daniel 9.27 and uh, that it's that it's now that the Daniel 70th week is about to start. And then chapter 12, verse, I think in verse three, when he says, shut these things up in a book, Daniel, until the time of the end. Later on in that same chapter, he says, it's not for you to know you're going to die. You're going to go to your father, your, your fathers, and you're going to rest. But at the time of the end, these things will be revealed. And we're seeing revelations take place. It's not new revelation. It's just re- shining a light on what has been because there's nothing new under the sun but what has been will be done again according to ecclesiastics and i know i'm going really quickly but i'm excited about what's going on now this is not my normal broadcast time i'm going to do this video and post it immediately because the ninth of of for us here in missouri in northern missouri st joseph missouri is where i live not from there, but this is where I live. This is where I pastor. This is where I minister. It begins for us at somewhere between 1 and 2 o'clock p.m. this afternoon. This afternoon, all right? Because the sun doesn't go down in Jerusalem um, until between oh, 8 and 9 sometime. And that is when they count the day beginning. We say midnight. They say sundown. Sundown is roughly between eight and nine, and we're eight hours difference. So between one and two is the actual start date of the ninth of Av, and that's the day of, of reckoning for Israel. It's a day of mourning. It's a day of terror. It's a day of terrible hardship that had its birth from the disobedience of Israel by not going into the promised land when the, when the Lord brought them right up to the border. They sent in the 12 spies. 12 spies came back, spied out the land, uh, came back, Ten of them said, we can't do it. Two of them said, God is able. Look what he's done. They said, no, there's giants. God said, yeah, they're giants, and I can take care of them. Look what I did to Og and to Sihon. And um, evidently, they had a church, church vote, and they voted not to go in. And that was the day. Of nine, ninth of Av was that day in which you could call it, I call it maybe a consequential curse happened. Bad things have happened since then, many, many things. And there are those who have had great lists of the bad things that have happened on the ninth of Av. Watchman River, Tom Cote has a, a great list of things that happened on the ninth of Av. Um, bad stuff, including both temples being destroyed, Solomon's temple, and later on Herod's temple being destroyed on the ninth of Av. Uh, so many things. But it's also the day that we've been looking at between this time period, the ninth of Av and the 15th of, of Av, being Tishba Av, that means ninth of Av, and Tuba Av, which means the 15th of Av, and that's the full moon. And what happened on those two dates? Ninth of Av, of course, has been shown to have have been according to the temple scrolls temple documents the feast or festival of new wine it's also the second 50-day period 
the second Pentecost just simply means the 50. So it's the second 50 from, from uh, the first fruits resurrection. The first 50 was Shavuot in which Moses went up and received the oral law came down, it came back down, presented that oral law as a ketubah, uh, a marriage covenant proposal. And Israel said, yeah, we'll do it. And he goes back 50 days later, after 40 days of not being seen on the top of the mountain, 40 days. And then he comes back with the written law in his hand and they're partying before the golden calf. He throws the things down. That was the second 50. And that second 50 is marked by the festival of new wine. 3,000 people were uh, slaughtered because of that terrible adultery that was committed after having received the proposal of marriage from God and then 50 days later breaking it before another God, 3,000 people died. But it's also that festival of new wine in which the Spirit of God was poured out on, on the believers who were gathered in one place in one accord. And uh, they accused them as the Spirit of God came upon them, tongues of fire, and they, they began to speak in, in other languages as the Spirit gave utterance. And they all said, oh, we hear our in our own language from these uneducated Galileans, the, the things of God, the gospel. And yet some stood up. They're drunk on new wine. Okay, there's your clue. It was the festival of new wine. Peter stands up and says, no, it's only nine in the morning. According to the temple documents, that's when the priest poured out the first fruits of the new wine upon the altar. You can't drink wine until that moment because it's old wine. It's heavily, it's more heavily fermented because of age. You got to wait for the new wine. You can't put new wine into old wineskins. Something had to happen. Spirit of God's poured out. The promise of the fathers poured out. It all happened on this day that's coming up for me at one in the morning. Some of you, it's already, you know, it's already started. So we're looking for this time period to be the time of the catching of the way, possible time of the catching away, the rapture. The word's not in the Bible, but the sentiment is in the Bible. The Greek word is in the Bible, catching away, snatching away, the rapture. And Tuba'av, the 15th of the month of Av, which was significant because it was the day that the virgins went out at the end of the harvest and were dancing at midnight and they were snatched up by the men of Benjamin. So this is a high watch time and we want to see God fulfill the promise by sending Jesus in the clouds to catch his bride, to catch the church away. The dead in Christ will rise first. And we who are alive and remain shall be caught up harpazo together with them in the clouds and meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. We'll never be separated from him uh, physically, spiritually, or any other way. We will be with the Lord. He will have his bride and praise God. So we've been studying all of that. I just wanted to give you a word of encouragement, though, because so many are staking all of their hopes on this date. And I really hope this is the day. But what if it's not? I don't want you to be discouraged other than the normal discouragement that would happen to any bride when the groom didn't show up when she thought he was going to show up. There's going to be some disappointment. She's going to keep watching and she's going to be excited. But what I want to encourage you in today is don't be disappointed to the point where you just I say it this way, and, and I, ho I hope you're not offended by this too much, maybe a little bit. Don't curl up in a spiritual fetal position and say your world is ending because it's just too hard to live in these days. No, it is not. Tell that to the people who have been martyred for the Lord over, over the centuries. Don't fall into the lie of the enemy that would discourage you and depress you to the point, well, I just can't live because this oppression is so hard. No, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Philippians 4.13, by the way. We work until he comes. Now, I want to tell a little story. And I, I, I've done the little first part of the preaching, okay, just to give you the review and hope you're not bored or haven't lost attention. But I want to give you a little story of, of our lives 
um, uh, just to illustrate the point of where we are right now and how we are to live. Okay, years and years ago, this was in late the late 1980s. 1988, we uh, finished up a year of language school in Costa Rica. We were uh, going to Colombia. So this is during the time of Pablo Escobar. Those of you who are old enough to remember the, the days of the infamous Pablo Escobar in Colombia. It was a three-way three -way war taking place and, and very dangerous. And it was one of those uh, visas that were given, advisories that were given by the State Department. Don't go to Colombia. Don't travel to Colombia because it was a three-way war between the government, the drug cartels, the drug cartels with other drug cartels, and the and the Marxist guerrillas fighting everybody. And it was a mess, time of great violence. And yet the Lord called us there and gave us assurance that he would protect us. And he did. So we finished up our language school. I kind of had uh, enough Spanish to be somewhat dangerous, but uh, I'm a preacher. So I got to preach whether I can speak the language fully or not. And so we arrived in our city of destination, which we didn't know until we got to the country and started looking around, started flying from one city to the next. And we realized when we landed in this place called Cali, Colombia, that this was the place that God was calling us. At that time, it was the second largest, third largest city in Colombia. It had a couple of million people and uh, was just behind Medellin and quite a ways behind the capital city, Bogota. Since then, it's become the second largest city. Details, details, details. So we land, we uh, we find a place to live and uh, start preparing to do whatever ministry we were going to do, which was heavily involved in evangelism, discipleship, and planting new churches. And one of the pastors, we're only five pastors uh, within our fellowship that were in the city at that time, very small churches, but one of them said, would you come preach? And I ended up preaching the same sermon to all five of those churches within a couple of weeks. So I was getting pretty practiced on the sermon. So I wanted to start a new one. And uh, so I'm with this brother and we are driving down one of the streets of the city in Cali, give you a description here. And I'm driving and this brother, his name was Isidro Perilla. Uh, and he's still there, uh, not in the city, but he's still in Colombia. He's a Colombian. And I'm asking this brother, this pastor, and, and I'm, I'm talking with him, learning some words and kind of get the language down a little bit more. And, you know, I'm a gringo man. I don't speak very well into your language. <laughs> okay. So we're driving down the street. The street is uh, divided by a channel. It's pretty deep. And so it's it's like what we would look at as a really deep ditch. And I didn't know what it was. There's water flowing in the bottom of it. And in my mind, I'm thinking of this sermon that I want to preach. And the sermon is based on um, while we have time, we want to be working for the Lord and be channels literal channels of the Holy Spirit to minister to other people. Isn't that what we're supposed to be as believers? And so I'm going to, I want to preach that message. I'm feeling by the Holy Spirit that I, that's the message I'm supposed to create in Spanish. So I'm trying to learn all the words and put everything together. And it's difficult because I'm an English speaker, not a Spanish speaker, but I'm learning. And so I'm going down, driving down and I'm, I'm looking at this channel and, and I am, I'm thinking of canal. That's what I'm thinking of. It's a water canal. And I asked my brother, hermano, ¿qué es eso? All right, that's all the Spanish I had. ¿Qué es eso? And he said, that is a caño. Oh, new word. So that word canal is actually translated into Spanish. This is what I'm thinking. It's a caño. All right. Are you with me? So I, I work out my sermon and I'm. it's a Sunday night, which was their main their main worship service Sunday night. And uh, there are about, oh, probably 70 people in this little room. They're all crowded together as Colombians would do. They're not afraid of each other's smell and they sit with one another and they hug and kiss one another and start the service an hour late. And it's just, it's just a free for all. And uh, I think it pleases God greatly. So finally I'm introduced, hermano Jimmy, come preach, you know, and I'm kind of, speaking English, but he's speaking in Spanish. 
So he gives me the invitation to come preach the word. And so I come up, greet the people as best I possibly could. And then uh, I open the word, open my notes, and I said, we're going to start preaching. And so I I used, I don't even remember the text. I used the text. And uh, and then I started preaching about being a kanyo for the Holy Spirit to other people. And to do that, we need to be filled up. The kanyo needs to be full. It needs to be full. So if we're going to be a kanyo for the Holy Spirit, we need to be full of the Holy Spirit. And you're going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless you know Spanish, you're 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 already laughing. But I'm thinking this is great, man. And people are responding. You know, they're right. They're right in there. Their eyes are open. They're amen, hermano. You know, they're shouting out hallelujah and all these kind of things. And it's just a lovely ruckus time. And it's great preaching time. And I'm preaching to be a kanyo for God's blessing. And then. And I and I get through probably about twenty minutes is all all the Spanish I had. I was already running out of Spanish, and the translating that was happening in my head was already starting to mess me up. And so I had an altar call, and I said, "Hermanos y hermanas, if you guys want to be filled with the Holy Spirit, maybe you've never been filled with the Holy Spirit. Yes, the Holy Spirit lives in you, but you need an." extra surge and outpouring of the Holy Spirit, just like what happened to them on the day of Pentecost, which we now know is the feast of festival of new wine. Whoa. And I'm talking about being a channel for God's blessing. Whoa. Talk about, talk about fulfillment. Incredible. And so the, the people rushed to the altar I don't know how many, not all of them, but a bunch of them. Some got saved right there, led them to Jesus. And then I began to pray that the Lord would pour out his spirit upon them, just like he did on the day of the 50. Then I called it Pentecost. It wasn't until later that I began to see number problems with when we celebrated Pentecost. That's another sideline. I'm praying, oh God, fill them. Fill these kanyos with God's blessing. Fill these kanyos with the Holy Spirit. And people were filled with the Holy Spirit. And it was an incredible move of God right there. And so I'm worn out, man. And the people are still praying at the altars. We've gone two hours. I mean, goodness, it's going deep into the night. And and they can't go too late because they have to get on the uh, public transportation to go to their various locations. Uh, and I think that ended at like 11 at night. So uh, but it's going late. And so I go back to the back and, and I find Brother Isidro and I stand by Isidro and I'm sweating. I'm like, I don't have any more words in Spanish. I'm like, done. And Isidro has this little sly smile on his face. And immediately I'm thinking, okay, what did I do wrong? What did I do? And he goes, hermano. The word that you're looking for is canal or real. A caño is a sewage drain. I did one of the gringoisms. I did a gringoism. I assumed that was the word because I asked him, what is that, brother? That's a caño. And he told me what it was. It's a caño, which is... In the barrios, uh, they don't have, at that time, they didn't have piped uh, sewer systems. So it, it all went into little little uh, uh, ceramic drains out behind the houses. Then they all flowed into a larger drain, and then they all flowed into a larger ditch. And eventually into these big ditches that took all the, the dark water, the black water, the sewage, and everything, and took them out to the big river, the Rio Cauca. That was their sewer system. I didn't know it. And so I preached for that 20 to 25 minutes on how we are, we should be channels of God's blessing. But that's not what I'm preaching on. I'm preaching we should be sewer pipes of God's blessing. And the people were so gracious. They understood what I was trying to say. And, and now I look back on it. And it's like, that's don't be offended by this, but that's kind of what we are because we are not, 
we're waiting for our day of redemption. We are sealed to that day of redemption, but we're still in this flesh, in this corruptible flesh, in this flesh that still sins, in this flesh that still, we fight, we look, we say, oh my goodness, I've sinned. We confess our sins, and he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And we still are sometimes just mad at ourselves because we we gave into a wrong thought or we said something wrong or we sinned and we just oh we come to the lord and say lord for, and he's so gracious to forgive us so in a way we're still in that kanyo we're in that kanyo state this does not give us license to be a sewer ditch guys that's not what i'm saying I'm saying in this time that we have left, knowing that we are not yet perfected other than being seated with Christ in heavenly places, we are still in this fleshly corruptible body. We are, we are still in this corruption until that trumpet sounds. But what are we to do? Sit back and say, oh, well, I'm, you know, I'm not going to be able to do anything about it anyway. And, you know, God's got me covered. Or do we say, Lord, clean me? And make me a blessing. I'm going to do what you've called me to do. And I'm going to be a river of God's blessing. A river of the Holy Spirit. A river to those around me until that trumpet sound. I am going to work until the moment. And we may have a few hours. We may have a few days. We may have a couple months. We may, we may not have more than a few minutes, but for whatever time we have, would you please commit yourself to being a channel for God's blessing? Not a Kanyo, but a channel knowing that you're not perfected, but God isn't requiring you to be perfect to share the love of Jesus. He's simply requiring you to love Jesus yourself and depend on Jesus and trust Jesus for your salvation and for that day that is coming and look for that day and love that approaching day. And this might be the day. And if it's not, it might be tomorrow and it might be the next six or seven days and it might be the next month. I don't know how it can go on much longer, but whatever the case, Jesus said this, he had healed a man and a man who was blind. This is from John chapter nine and healed a man who was blind. And his disciples were curious, uh, why is this man blind? Was it because he sinned or because his parents sinned? And Jesus bypassed the answer. He said, neither this man nor his parents sinned. All are sinners, sinners and all of us are all of us sin and fall short of God's glory. That's not the point. The point is he hadn't done anything that brought the calamity upon himself of blindness. But he said, but that the works of God should be revealed in him. So, yeah, we're a work in progress, aren't we? But he said this, I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am the world, I am the light of the world. Now, Jesus ascended on Shavuot, but he made us because of the Holy Spirit living in us and the church as a whole of born again believers. The spirit of God dwells in the body of Christ, the church. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit, both individually and as a whole. Of born again believers and we are the light of the world we are the light of the world so what are we to do work while it is day and it's still day guys it's still we see darkening night skies we see the darkness covering the earth we see the deception coming we see the shadow of the tribulation and it's pretty big we see it all happening right now but what are we to do work work while it is still day so if that's today find someone to share jesus with find someone to love Show the love of God with, give someone a drink of water, give someone a smile, give someone a word of encouragement, and always try to bring it to Jesus and God's goodness in your life that he has shown you. And if you can give the full alt gospel of Jesus and your testimony of how the Lord changed you and how you were born again, do it. Please do it. If all you can do is pray, you can't get out, can't minister to anybody, pray, pray hard today, not for the rapture but for souls to be saved in these last few hours, days, minutes, because the Lord can do it. He can do it. He can do it. Now, lastly, if you've made it this far in the video this afternoon at um, Eastern time, it will be one o'clock. My time, it will be start at two o'clock. And for a couple hours, there are going, going to be many, many watchmen present 
in mass meetings on uh, a, a YouTube channel known as Watchman for That Great Day. Brother John Boucher is uh, the content creator for that channel. And he's invited a lot of Watchmen. I'll be on that. I've left the link down below to that live stream. And uh, so um, click on the notify when that happens and uh, be ready to watch. It's going to be populated by a lot of people. Uh, Brother Tyler will be there. Uh, Dr. Dr. Barry All will probably be there. Uh, possibly Chad from Watchmen on the wall. Other other Watchmen, Watch 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 Woman uh, will probably be. I mean, many, 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 many. I can't even name them all. There are many, many. Uh, poss possibly Watchman River. Tom uh, would probably be there. Uh, I don't know who all is going to be there. Uh, Bob Barber from End Times Dream and Dreams and Vision. Aaron from Got a Minute. Uh, I can't name them all. But if you uh, click on there, you, that's going to be an incredible live stream. stream and uh, it's going to be great if the rapture trumpet sounded while we're all together. Oh, my goodness. So go visit that. Uh, thank you to the many subscribers this last uh, couple of weeks over uh 1200 1300 subscribers have jumped on board with us and that's not my intent uh to be lots and lots of subscribers but you're interested in what's taking place and i hope we're able to bless you in some way so with that being said may the lord keep you and may you hear the trumpet sound maybe even today and let us fly away and meet the lord in the air and eternity with jesus Whew. May it be. Until then, be encouraged. Work until he comes. May you be strengthened by the Spirit of God to be rivers of blessing for the Lord Jesus Christ. If I don't see you again. I'll see you in the air. I love you all. <laughs>